fossils here. And does that, can anybody tell me what fossils are good for? Kara. <laughs> Trace like identification of like uh, telling of time of like you can use it for climate. Okay. <laughs> and uh, it's like you can use things like Corbinifera for trace fossils. Do you like trace back and forth, right? Okay, no, but that's not what a trace fossil is. Right. But I failed. <laughs> I can't think. <laughs> okay, so so they can be used to tell time. Okay, that one. Right. And they can be used to tell us about past environments. Oh, yeah. Those are two of the major sources. And so here I have the geologic time scale, and, and we use fossils for relative dating, and then we can, um, if there are igneous rocks or things like that nearby, igneous or metamorphic rocks nearby, we can date them in those, in those layers, and then we can get a, um, an absolute date that we can use. And that's how, so that's how the geologic time scale was put together, was using relative dating and uh, absolute dating together. Um, I have a bunch of different fossils here, and Kara brought up the fact that um, we have some fossils that are actually body fossils, and so they're actually parts of, of skeletons of organisms, and then we have some fossils that are just um, sort of evidence of their behavior. So, for instance, this is a, this is a coral, and this is its skeleton. Um, and then I have I have something here, I have a smooth stone. Does anybody know what this might be? A gastrolith? It is. It is a gastrolith. And what is a gastrolith, Dr. It's Burns? a stomach stone of a dinosaur. It is. And so dinosaurs would, would uh, swallow these, and then they would be in their sort of, you know, digestive tract, and it would help them to break up um, other things that they ate. And so that's, this is, this is not a body fossil because it's not part of its skeleton. But you can also find tracks and trails and things like that and those are evidence of fossilized behavior and you can also find, you know, fossilized poop and things like that. Um, so I have a variety of different fossils here. Does anybody want to come up and see if you can figure out what some of these things are? Adam, since you're taking paleontology, you've seen some of these before. Have a fish here. I'm guessing it's a <laughs> No, it's a fish. It's a true. Fish. This okay. is a fish. It's a fake one. It's a fake fish, and so it's supposed to be from one of those Lagerstaten, which is the exceptionally preserved deposits. Which which of the Lagerstaten you think had fish in it? Solenhofen. Solenhofen. It's Jurassic Solenhofen is what it is, which is a, it's a deposit in, in Germany, which has um, very, very nice uh, sort of chalk deposit that can be used for making lithographs. So that's how they discovered it, it was actually uh, mining the stone. And it has, uh, has, it's exceptionally preserved organisms, and so there's even soft tissue preserved. Do you have shark vomit? I don't have shark vomit, I have shark teeth. Okay. I have teeth. Okay, so we have some teeth here. These are little tiny shark teeth. And then I have this. This is a tooth. Does anybody know what kind of a tooth this is? Who would this belong to? Mastodon. Yeah. <laughs> yep, this is a mastodon tooth. And it's actually from, I believe it's from Illinois. And so it, during the Pleistocene, um, you know, 15,000 years ago, these guys were wandering around. And so there's lots of different fossils that you can find. You can find marine organisms like corals. This is a one of this is a, a more modern coral, although it's it's still a fossil. These are Paleozoic corals. They're um, solitary corals that lived in the sea floor in the you know 400 million years ago. And then um, this is a cephalopod which is like if you take a squid and you stick it in a shell, that's what a cephalopod is. Um, I also have some plants, because plants get preserved sometimes too, and we have a, an exceptionally preserved or a lager satin deposit here in Illinois. Adam, what's our lager satin here in Illinois? That's right. And we have some, this isn't from the Maison Creek, but it's, it's, this is similar to what you would find in the Maison Creek. You find concretions and you open them up and then there are, there are uh, 
leaves and things like that that you can find in those concretions. Um, let's see what else. Trilobites are always a favorite. <laughs> and um, this is actually the state fossil of Ohio. <laughs> this is the Isotelus. Um, and it, they, they are arthropods, so they're kind of like um, pill bugs. And, and you can find them because they molt, so they shed, they shed their exoskeleton. You can find, you, they're actually um, pretty easy to find trilobite exoskeletons in the, in the Paleozoic. They're, they're extinct now. They died at the end of the Permian because there was a big extinction event because there are five major extinction events throughout Earth's history. And the one was at the Permian-Triassic uh, boundary. Mm -hmm.